Okay, so I'm gonna go right into kind of the development experience here. So someone named Ahmed created this um, NPM package called Create Gutenblock. Has anybody heard of Create React React app before? Okay, so um, how about NPM? Who's familiar with the NPM ecosystem? Okay, so um, for anybody unfamiliar, NPM stands for Node Package Manager, and it's a way to manage these like little uh, packages of JavaScript dependencies that a larger project relies on. So um, Ahmed created this uh, package called Create Guten Block that allows you to scaffold a block without going through like the webpack setup and like the files, the file structure, um, or rather like the directory structure, because there's a lot of setup to do if you're dealing with kind of a modern JavaScript application. And Create React App is something that allows you to do that for um, basic React applications. And so this is kind of like piggybacking off of that idea where you can just say Create Guten Block. Okay. It made all my files, thank God. Now I can just like write my code. So that's what we're gonna use. Um, and I'm gonna go into, so up here I have uh, Visual Studio Code, which is my editor of choice. And it really nicely has this integrated terminal at the bottom, um, so I can keep everything right there. And then I have my plugins folder open on the left, just so I can see, that's kind of my point of reference now, since everything's gonna be plugged in. So I can say create, oops, and I hit tab, and so you can see I have create React app down here, something I've used before. Um, so create Putin block, and then we can call our block, uh, nice block, pizza block. How about that? That's a lot better. Pizza block. Okay. And I'll wait for some magic to happen. All of your WordPress sites are going to now be 15 gigs of NPM modules. <laughs> that's, I'm just waiting to like get some kind of notification on my computer that's like out of memory, like you have too much JavaScript. Um, so luckily that didn't happen now. So see this, look how great this is. Cause look, come in, I don't know, this, this stuff is so hard to get your hands into. I don't know if anybody's getting into this whole JavaScript ecosystem. It's really a lot to get your head around. So this kind of, um, UI and like attention to detail from a developer's great. So, okay, we su suggest that you start by typing this. So let's do that. CD into pizza block, I press tab to complete. Um, and then I'm gonna say NPM start, I'm just gonna run my task. And that's gonna watch all my files and perform this build step. Um, so with Gutenberg, you can create your blocks with uh, like ES5, I guess, or like the, current version of JavaScript. So ES6 is ECMAScript uh, 2015, or ES, the sixth version of ECMAScript, which is the spec for JavaScript. So who, uh, who is not familiar with ES6? Or like, okay, yeah, so it's kind of like the new version of JavaScript. And there's a lot of new features in JavaScript that drastically change what the language looks like, and also make it quite a bigger barrier to entry, because um, there's a lot of really shorthand shorthand syntax and like syntactical sugar things that make it nice for developers. Um, I would suggest when you're creating blocks to just like dive in and like it's it's frustrating and you just, just gotta get through it. It's kind of like the developer experience, I guess, um, in general. But so I go into pizza block and I have uh, my package.json, which is all of the scripts that um, the create Guten block is taking care of for me. And inside here, there's some kind of webpack config going on, so I don't need to worry about all that building. The only folder you are concerned with is SRC, is source. Um, and this is where my block structure is. So then we have blocks.js, which is gonna be just includes, so just imports of your block specific file. So I have this folder called block, which this is, this is like great to have this set up already. So the idea is, all of your files you're touching, like pretty much the only thing you'll do is touch these three files inside block. So block.js is gonna be registering all of the things that Gutenberg cares about, so like your components, et cetera. And, <clears throat> and then we also have a style sheet for the editor, so we can style that back end of Gutenberg, and then we have styles for the front end as well. So in block.js, um, we're importing both of the style sheets. This is something that uh, Webpack, which is the build tool, I suppose, that is compiling all of our styles to be used on the front end. 
um, or compiling all of our code. And then here I'm importing some blocks from Gutenberg itself. So we come down, I'm gonna kind of go by this a little bit quickly. And this is what we really care about in here, is this register block type. So this is the function that is telling WordPress our block exists. And this is gonna be my name, in, the name of it in code, and this is the name that's gonna be visible in the dashboard. Or rather in the, uh, in Gutenberg, in the block, like select new block. We got some keywords, so all these are kind of this fill in the blank sections, um, like adjust as you need to. And then inside here, I'm gonna zoom out a little bit so we can kind of see what, um, there's a lot of code in these files and that's just how the, that's how React is, I've learned. So essentially, I'm gonna collapse these just so we can see kind of the big, the big picture here. So in register block type, when you're creating a block, um, you have kind of your general setup stuff up here. So you're giving it a name, an icon, et cetera. And then there's the edit function and the save function or method. And edit is, um, the screen, I think of them as kind of views, like the different versions of something. So edit is gonna be the version of your block that's in Gutenberg from the back end. And then save is gonna be the saved version of your block. So that's the markup that's saved into the database in between those two HTML comments. And inside edit, you'll see, so if we look at a, um, check out my little content call out block, which has, I don't know how well you guys can see this here. Um, so this is my content callout block, and you'll see it has the same the same uh, file structure as pizza block because I used uh, create Guten block to generate it. And so in content callout block, I have source, and then I called this content callout, and I named my main file index.js for whatever reason. Um, made some notes for myself about what this includes, and um, I have a few other dependencies from the default WordPress blocks, which I'll get to in a second. But down here, I have the same kind of, kind of situation. And then I also have this attribute section, which I wanna to get to in a sec. But let's look at this edit function. So there's a lot of other stuff going on here. And then I'm returning something that, uh, this is kind of the telltale sign of React. And if you're like, I'm not sure if I should be like writing code that I'm gonna see, or if this is like Gutenberg stuff, um, anything that where you see these kind of made up tags, that is React. Um, so there's all this stuff, like a lot of stuff, and this is the only thing that's going into the, data, the database. So previously, our jobs as developers were basically to like create new field and then write this stuff, and that was all. But now we do all of this. So it's a big, it's a lot of, a lot, a big learning process. So I'm gonna do my little block demo now before I get on ranting too much. Okay, so the first thing we need to do are add attributes to a block. And attributes, I'm gonna copy and paste this code in just so I'm not making a bunch of typos. Um, we're gonna create a some content called some text, because that's great. So attributes, they, they kind of bridge the gap between like Gutenberg and the JavaScript stuff and what's in the database. So attributes are a required thing that kind of come after keywords. I think of this as kind of the setup object up here. Um, and this first one's kind of the name of it. And then these three sections down here type um, pretty much any, anything that isn't a specifically like a number or a string is gonna be an array. So anything that's an element in JavaScript terminology is gonna be an array. And then the source children, these two, this, these are more nuanced than I wanna go into now, but these are probably gonna be the most common selectors, or rather the most common entries. Then the selector is you're saying like, okay, find this div. So essentially what, from my understanding right now, what attributes does is whenever Gutenberg, you open up, open up a page and Gutenberg's loading and it gets a, it gets WP, you know, colon image in the comment and says, okay, uh, this is an image block. Let me load up the image block and see what the attributes are. And then it says, okay, I need to find some text and that's the data there. So that those, uh, the attributes are what connect what's in that block of comments um, to what you see on the page. Whew. I'm exhausted already. Uh, okay, so we're making something called some text. Next step is I want to make some text editable. And editable is a React component that we need to use. 
So we're going to import the React component up here as it comes from WP blocks. It's kind of pointing to the larger blocks object. Um, and then inside edit is where I'm going to uh, call my React block. So let me grab my little snippet of code here. Um, let me just, before I get too into this, I want to show you what this block looks like. Let's activate our plugin. Pizza block, here it is. Amazing. Okay, and you're going to need to refresh the page. So if you ever activate a block, you need to resend everything because Gutenberg is the client side and it's not necessarily listening to new plugins being active. Okay, so here's pizza block. Okay, pizza block, new Gutenberg block. Okay, so I wanna add a little bit of text right here that I can just like click on and edit. And that's how we do that. So I'm gonna put this in here. Um, once again, without going into too many details because a lot of stuff I still don't understand, I'm saying the editable, the thing I want to be editable, editable is tag, is a paragraph tag. Here's my placeholder. This underscore stuff is like some translation function. And then this is important. So value is props.attribute.sumText. So some text is the attribute we've created up here. So I think that's like the biggest thing when you're creating and learning to create blocks is to figure out like the things that are connected. So attributes is our attributes are connected to these props or the or our, our, our entries in props. Um, props are this. I don't know. It's a React terminology. The next part, which is I think, and this is just how React is, but it seems so like verbose to me to have to do this for everything. So you need to write a function that tells the text to update. So this on change uh, attribute or property of editable um, needs some kind of function that says, hey, update the attributes with this whatever text is gonna be inside editable. So on change, so I need to write a, um, and const is a, New, a new way of saying var, I suppose, um, with a lot of caveats. Uh, but so I'm going to say const and then on change some text. And here's some of the ES, ES6 magic you're going to see everywhere is value, which is my function parameter. And then I'm returning this. So then I say, hmm, you know what? I don't remember what's right. So I'm going to reference a different block, which is this is kind of how my workflow has been for um, working in Gutenberg is to download some other demo blocks, which I'm gonna show in a second, but I'm gonna bring one up quickly here. So here are a few other example blocks from Zach Gordon. Does anybody know Zach Gordon, his classes? He does a lot of his like JavaScript for WordPress classes. They're pretty great. So what I will usually do is as I'm creating a block and as I'm learning this stuff, I'll be like, uh, okay, I'm gonna like look at this side by side with a finished block and kind of compare, compare notes. And VS Code has a nice little split screen situation you can do here. Um, so inside here, I need to say props dot set attributes. And then I'm going to set my attribute to, so right now I'm inside props and I, or I'm inside uh, attributes and I want to update my specific attribute. So in our case, it's some text. And I'm going to set that to value because value is what I'm getting from the editable component. Okay, looks great, fantastic. And then, of course, I need to return my, my new some text in some format. So maybe I'm gonna put that here instead. So hello from the front end, and I'm gonna say props dot attributes dot some text. Cool, maybe this will work. And I can double check down here, which it looks like I have a syntax error, of course, because live demos. Um, What's that? Oh, 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 great. That was not too hard. Isn't it fun watching someone else code and you see them make a mistake and you're like, I wonder when they're going to realize. <laughs> Currently, 
um, you need to reload the page every time you make a change to the block. This is something you'll see. I have an error. This block is like throwing an error about something. So if you do update a block, you'll see something like this. You can just say overwrite or, um, or actually, let me show you what this does. So I have these other options, which is really nice. So it's like, oh, I just want this to be HTML. Something's super broken. I don't want to mess with it. I can say, okay, my HTML is there. So you always have this fallback, uh, fallback to HTML if you want. So let's add our pizza block. And yay, I can write something new. Hello, pizza. Eight. Cool. It says I've been updated. Let's check it out. Um, cool. Nice. Uh, so you notice there's different styling on the back end and the front end. So that's something we can adjust in our uh, style sheets here as well. So editor.css, this is a generated class for the block. And um, whoever's decided that to be green. And on the front end, we have this. So there's a lot of redundancy in these styles. And that is something I definitely foresee uh, merging and becoming less of an issue. I have a list of resources here um, and some like example issues that I think, so on, on the GitHub, it's, it's really intimidating, I think, to um, post GitHub issues and like be part of the Slack because you have all these like, it's like fantastic engineers and designers, like automatic people that are working on this stuff. And, but it really is like an open community platform. So if you look at the GitHub or the Slack channel, the Slack channel is a big part of how WordPress core operates. So you can, it's an open Slack, anybody can join. And there's a core editor channel that has um, kind of automated, um, automated new pull requests or issues from the GitHub, but there's also meetings and people can ask questions in here. Like I've asked some questions. Um, there you go. So I was like, checking my understanding. Did I get this right? Someone's like, that's old. I was like, oh. <laughs> um, so that happens. 